Hey everybody, Steve here, and I can't tell you how excited I am about this video. This is going to be really, really, really fun. So it's time to start checking out the Colorado. It's a 2006, um, and it doesn't have any mods to it. Nothing, not a single thing. So uh, we're going to start on the inside, and uh, something I've never, ever done before is put a big old subwoofer in a car. I'm so excited about this. Um, and then, uh, we're also going to do some six by nines in the back. It already has some nice five and a quarters. Uh, I put those in about a year ago because, uh, the factory ones were completely dead and we're going to go with this, uh, Kenwood Exelon DDX 396, which is the bottom of the line touchscreen head unit, uh, with six outputs is what my requirement was. And also my other requirement was that I want to be able to listen to music from my phone. So, uh, speaking of those six outlets, uh, there's the RCAs for the fronts, the backs, and the sub. There's a, there's a amplifier kit, and the creme de la creme is this kicker amp. Uh, it is a five-channel amp. Uh, four of the channels are 65 watts, and the subwoofer is 300 watts at two ohms. So, uh, that's going to go into the seat, I hope. And I also got uh, a couple enclosures uh, for the 6x9s. And in addition to those enclosures, I also have some speed wire, also, nine, also known as 9 wire. So, uh, incidentally, all of this stuff can be found on Amazon. And uh, I'll leave links to all of this stuff uh, in the description of the video if you want to replicate this one. Uh, the only thing that I can think of that you might want to do different is you might want to add... Depending on the size of your front speakers, you might want to add some five and a quarters. All right, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is, before I take any of this stuff out of the box, is I want to test fit it in the back of the Colorado, because there's not a whole lot of room there. I measured carefully, but uh, you know how that goes. So uh, I'll go check and see if... Uh, if the stuff is gonna fit, and if so, we're gonna get started with this. Well, here's the space that I'll be dealing with. Not a whole lot of space, and uh, I hate to have to get rid of that jack, but it's really the only way to fit the subs and uh, the six by nines back here. Obviously, I'll also be giving up uh, having any chance at uh, stowing anything back here, uh, but I never do anyway. So the jack's gotta go, and I'll start test fitting everything. Okay, so on with my test fitting. Um, this is the widest part of the sub, which is gonna sit in the middle. And instead of just putting the sub back there and then shoving the seats to their most back positions, I found a box that's exactly the same width as the sub, and it's going to be my test. A little styrofoam box, and incidentally, this is the widest portion of that speaker, and then I've got another one for uh, the other speaker case. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these back there and then I'm going to shove the seats back and see if I scrunch them. And if I do, uh, I'll know I'll have to either A, be careful or B, not proceed, depending on how bad it is. So here's my mock stuff. There's my mock speaker and my mock sub and my other mock speaker. And now I can put the seat back and see if it squishes the stuff. I'm going to sit, I'm going to move it back to where I would normally sit, and I'm the tallest person in the family, so. All right, I moved the chair back about as far as I ever would, and I've got plenty of room with the speaker. Got to be careful around the sub, and then that side is obviously fine. So now I'm going to shove the seat all the way back. Okay, so I shoved it back. I shoved the seat back as far as it will go to see if it did any damage at all to the styrofoam, and it didn't. Now, I'm going to not want to do that with the stuff in there, just to be on the safe side, but uh, I'm happy to see that all my styrofoam is in perfect shape. All right, so here is what it'll look like once everything is in here for real. And I'm going to put the seat back and just test fit again. So two clicks back, further than I'll ever sit, and I still have... Three quarters of an inch is what that looks like. And uh, there's that. All right, so I'm gonna start getting going on this dashboard here, but before I wanna do any real work, I want to uh, I want to disconnect the negative uh, terminal from the battery. All right, so 
basically what we've got to do is we've got to get to the stereo and this black piece is obviously in our way. So if you have these tools, it really makes it actually kind of easy and a little less violent on your vehicle. And I'll put a link to uh, where you can get these on Amazon. But I'm just gonna pick the one that I think is the best, sh the best go and just basically lift it like that, pry it open. Always a good idea to start in the corners. There we go. Okay, also be careful and gentle because wires. So as you can see with the big black piece gone, now we're just down to this stuff. And there's gonna be two, I guess, those are probably eight millimeters on that side, one eight millimeter on that side. And then if we need to do the uh, AC stuff, we'll do the AC stuff too. But I'll start getting uh, to work on those now. Now, of course, every application is a little bit different. And this one has already got an aftermarket stereo on it. But once those are done, it's just a matter of pulling it out. Looks very scary, but it's, it's really not that scary. What we're after is that guy right there, which is the aftermarket stereo to to the car wiring harness. Couple things, we got an antenna. Just a few things we need to uh, a few things we need to um, disconnect here, uh, but nothing too too terrible. All right, so with that radio out, this is what we're looking at right here. And upon first inspection, uh, the double den is not going to fit with that big piece of metal in the way. So I can either bend it backwards or bend it forwards and backwards until it breaks off. Like that. No big deal. Might have to file that down some. All right, so I'm going to put the sub underneath this chair. I'm going to pull the chair out. That'll just kind of help me to be able to see everything. So there's a bolt with a seat belt on it. It's the long seat belt. That one doesn't have anything on it. And in the front, that's how that one is. And that's how that one is. And hopefully that'll get the seat out. And here's what we look like with the chair out. And all I have to do is say, yuck. Gotta definitely clean that up. Gotta have to shave this whole thing. Huh. I like putting these little things in there, don't they? He's pretty high. Yep, you gotta go. Let's see if the sub will fit. So I gotta figure out what my next move is. Probably this piece right here. Maybe the back piece. The back piece has definitely got to come out. Okay, so I got to figure out my wiring. Um, I don't want my power wire to be anywhere near my speaker wires because it'll introduce noise. So I've got to find one path for the power wire and one path for uh, all the other wires. All right, I was able to get this piece off by removing the little black tab that was right there. And then this piece right here I just use, use this guy right here and just kind of went around. There's the last one like that. I had to take the ball off the stick so that we could do this. And that's that. Now I can pull the carpet up and run wires down the middle. Now I've spent the better part of the last hour getting everything out of the car and uh, the carpet is right there and the seats. Now there's one seat. There's the other seat, but you get the picture. All right, so first thing we gotta do is we gotta get this uh, amp cable going from the battery to inside the car, which means we gotta go through the firewall, which means we need to pick a good firewall spot. Because I have a clutch and I didn't really see any good places to come in over on the driver's side, I'm looking to come in on the passenger side. I got a nice, a lot of uninterrupted space down there where I can just come through the firewall. And what I did was um, I went on the other side. I tapped a punch up against the metal to see where it came through. There's where they were coming out on the other side. So I know I'm not going to punch into anything. So I feel pretty good about drilling through. In a pretty good shape. So now I'm going to take a step bit and uh, make the hole bigger. That's essentially where it's gonna end up in the car. This car has been gutted, uh, cause I flooded it. And the carpet was moldy, so I figured this was a good time to pull the uh, pull the carpet out and, and, uh, and exchange it, or at least let it dry. But here's where I'm going through. I'm gonna use a step bit 
until I get a hole the size that I need, and then I'll feed the uh, I'll feed that cable through. All right, so we got a nice hole. I'm gonna put a grommet in there and uh, run my wire through it. All right, so I have decided to go behind the uh, whatever that is, the protective layer of the firewall, and uh, just kind of took it apart right here so that I could run along there, and then I'm dropping down. Um, this stuff has got some nasty fiberglass in it. So, so I'm feeding it on this side, and as soon as it binds up, I jump around to the other side, and it pops down yonder, all the way down there, and it comes out my nice new grommeted hole. And I got enough to go back to the back wall where I think the amp is gonna end up, not sure yet. One thing to pay particular attention to is if you see the wire right there, it's touching this heater hose. I'm going to want to either reroute it or protect it. Uh, I don't want to touch any of that hot stuff there. It is not essential to take everything out of the vehicle. However, this thing was left outside overnight and we got about four inches of rain that night. And uh, when I opened it up, um, it was just a big puddle of, of, of muck and yuck. So, um, this has been drying out for several days now, and it still kind of stinks, but uh, I think by the time I'm ready to put this thing back in, it'll be good to go. So, uh, so yeah, not essential that you do that, uh, but helpful. I'm looking up from underneath, and I'm very concerned about my wire being this close to the heater hoses and being uh, to, essentially, there's the exhaust right there. So, I'm going to mark the wire right at the firewall and up there. And I'm gonna put some um, protective coating on this wire that will protect it from the heat. Because nothing's hooked up right now, and even though it's a pain in the ass to do it right now, uh, it'll be a bigger pain in the ass to do it at some point later after the wire melts. So here we go. Okay, so I had to pull the wire back through the firewall. So this is my mark right here and then my other mark. And what I'm gonna be doing is because that six inch path right there or so is what's gonna be super close to the um, exhaust and the heater hoses, I'm gonna use this DEI fire sleeve and tape kit, cut off um, probably six or eight inches and uh, slide it up the hose to where it's right there and then reroute the power wire back through the firewall. And uh, I'll have peace of mind knowing that I did what I needed to do to protect this wire. All right, so I've got the DEI fire tape stuff on and now I'm ready to feed it back through the firewall. Uh, all right, so now I feel much better about protecting this wire down there by the exhaust manifold. There's a manifold right there, there's the wire. Uh, it's protected now. Okay, so I've determined where I want the amplifier to go and I want uh, easy access to all of that stuff. So this is gonna go out to the outside and then the uh, power and all the other stuff will go to the inside and there's a ground right there. So there's that. So I've got it in there and I've marked my holes or marked my spots. Okay, so I've got two concurrent situations going on here. Number one is the unlevel terrain. Even though I took a hammer to it earlier today, I wasn't able to hammer it completely flat. Um, so I'm still dealing with that. But what I've done is uh, I've cut this to try to get as close as possible. And then I noticed it was sitting really, really high, so I've got some spacers in there. Those spacers are glued down. That's So one issue is dealing with the unlevel terrain, and the second issue is dealing with the fact that I don't want to drill into the sheet metal, because I just don't. So what I've done with these is, if you can see the threads in there, I've tapped these so that I can just run a bolt through it. And I think that'll be enough to um, keep it locked down. So essentially what's gonna happen is these guys are glued down. This guy is gonna get glued to these guys. And then I'll be able to put the carpet in and then I'll just kind of cut in the carpet and my holes will already be there for me, measured. Okay, so I've got the stereo out of the box and it is obviously gonna go in there. So I'm gonna use this pack right here, the directions we're nothing but crap, so we're gonna figure it out for ourselves. But essentially, this guy goes in here. He's gotta hold on somehow, so uh, we've got, right here, right here, we've got three, ooh, three places that it can hold on to, so. So these two guys right here, 
these two guys right here are these puzzles. Two of these tabs will work, and the rest of them you break off. So let's go figure it out. And if you look carefully, they do say left and right, so at least they're that helpful. Okay, so I've determined that I want to use this one right here. So I'm going to break all the rest of them off. I've already broken one off in the back. And then here, I'm going to break this one off. I'm just going to kind of work it back and forth with the pliers and, uh, and break it off. And uh, I'm not going to do it with one hand. So breaking these tabs is a little nerve wracking. So uh, if you have the means to do it, I highly recommend using this instead. All right, so what I'm doing right now, and I've already done it a couple of times, is test fitting. Um, before you hook anything up, or at least before I hook anything up, um, I make sure that it fits in the dash. And uh, if I were to put this in, I'm off by a little bit, so I have to make some adjustments. And the way you make those adjustments is with all of your options here. All those little holes. So as you can see, I'm, I'm at a pretty good angle right here along this part right there. And then on the other side, I'm flush. So uh, I've got to loosen those screws and move this around to where it lines up better with the other side and try it again. Okay, so four was the magic number. Um, just plan to have a lot of patience when you do this part because it's going to take some wiggling and jiggling, but it'll get there. All right, so with the radio test fitted, it's time to start wiring everything up. And uh, we'll start here with the battery. And I've got this fuse here. I've got to figure out a location to mount the fuse. All right, so now what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to put the... That's the fuse. I'm going to tighten it down now. All right, so this is all set. I'm not going to hook anything up right now because uh, that wire is inside the car and it is live. All right, so with everything taken care of under the hood, it's time to hook up the power and ground. Right yonder, probably upside down. That's where we're going to go. That's where we're going next. The red's going to go to 12 volt. Black's going to go to ground. And uh, so that must mean that little one is, uh, that one's going to be for our switch power. Okay, let's talk about wiring. This is the wire harness that came with the radio or the stereo, whatever you want to call it. Um, unfortunately, the stereo doesn't know what kind of car it's going into. It doesn't know whether it's going into a Ford or a Chevy or a Dodge or a Lamborghini. So what we need to do is we need to buy a car specific wiring harness for this to attach to. And that looks like this. This one in particular is a Metra 70-2003, and it is for General Motors cars between 1998 and 2008. And it looks like this. Now, here's the good news. If you're just installing the stereo or the head unit, it's a one-for-one, one, okay? For every wire you see over here, red, yellow, black, etc., 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 you'll see a corresponding wire over here. And you just match them up one-for-one-for-one-for-one. For one for one for one. And that's it, period. End of story. You're done. You're wired. It's easy. Okay, so now I'm going to step up the level of difficulty, but just a tiny bit. In some vehicles, for example, my 2006 Colorado, the original wiring harness did not have a switch source, which is this red wire right there. So wiring from the radio through the aftermarket into the, the car's system won't do anything. So what I'm going to need to do is instead of wiring those two together, I'm just going to take this guy right here. And now I have to find in the fuse box a switched source and then running this thicker wire to the fuse box. So everything else would be just the same. It's just that I need to find a switched source. Okay, scenario three ups the ante a little bit, but still not that difficult. Uh, what we've got here is we've got our car harness and we've got our aftermarket harness and all the power stuff is still being connected there. And by power stuff, I mean the red, which is switched and yellow, which is constant and orange, which is the dimmer and black, which is ground and those sort of things. But look, the greens, the browns, the purples and the whites, 
are no longer connected. And the reason for that is because I'm adding an amp to the system. So what I'm going to be doing is from the amplifier, I'm going to be wiring this. This is called speed wire. There's actually nine wires in there and it's all eight wires for the speakers and then uh, one, uh, one extra wire for a switched source. And essentially what this is gonna do is this end right here, which I haven't done anything with, is gonna go into the back of the amplifier and the rest of it is going to find its way back up to the wire harness. Because I'm putting in an amplifier, I'm not going to be needing the four wires from the radio. I won't be using those. I'll be using these instead. So instead of connecting the radio speaker stuff to the aftermarket speaker stuff, I'm going to be connecting the amplifier speaker stuff to the aftermarket. Because remember, on the other end of this is the car. Okay? So we need to tell the car to drive the speakers. Once we add an amp, all of that information is going to be coming from the amp. So that's the amplifier telling the speakers what to do and the speakers getting connected to here and going through there. And right where my finger is, there's going to be wires specifically to the speakers because think about it, the, 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 the speakers already work with the factory radio. All we're doing is tapping into it right here. So I've already got wires going to all four speakers. That would be eight wires. Now, there's one piece missing here, and that is the RCA cables. I'm going to be running RCA cables from the back of the radio itself, which is not pictured here. And those are going to go directly to the amplifier. All right, so we've got our power wire taken care of. We've got our ground grounded. And now we've got to get power, switch power to this thing, which we're going to do via this speed wire, or nine wire, rather. All right, so if my wiring is correct, when we turn the key, the radio should come on, and it does. It's upside down, but it comes on. That's a good thing. All right, that's part A. Um, okay, so step two is seeing if we've got switched to the, uh, to the amp. I'm gonna go ahead and touch it. I'm touching it. Anything? Red, green. Green? Green. Okay, I'm gonna take it off. Nope. Nothing. Touching it? Red. So what does it do? It goes red, then green? Yep. That's green. It's green right now? That's green. So we have power to the amp, power to the radio, and it switched power. So now it's time to run some more um, wires. Okay, so we've got power to the amp and power to the radio, but we're not going to get any sound until they start talking to each other. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run these RCA cables um, from the back of the radio right there, and we're going to run them to the amplifier, actually on the other side. We also want to hear sound through our speakers. So that's what this speed wire does. And we're running it into the speed wire and that speed wire is going to go boom, 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 to here. And all the decisions are going to be made here as far as the speakers are concerned. So we've got power to the amp, ground to the amp. Um, that middle one right there is switched power, which is part of the nine wire. It's the ninth wire. And then um, all of our... Uh, all of our speakers. That just means, so that means that everything's going to get run through the amp before it gets to the speakers. And that's the whole purpose of uh, why we got an amp in the first place. But we need them talking to each other. Okay, quick word about wiring. All the RCAs are plugged in. And I tried to send everything over the big piece of metal because the vast majority of these connections are going to be above that piece of metal. And I didn't want to get them all bound up. So now it's just a matter of shoving this all back up in there and bolting it down, but I'm not going to do that. No way. What I need to do is I need to finish the rest of my connections and I'm going to test everything, make sure everything works and that everything is good. And then, and only then, will I put the head unit in its place. That'll be probably the last thing that I do. So uh, next, I've got all those RCA cables that got to find their way to the other side of the um, amplifier. And my speed wire is going to go to all of those guys right there. And then we should be able to turn it on and hear some speakers. Okay, so something weird about this 2006 Colorado is that the stock stereo did has no, um, has no switch power in it. Apparently, it's all done through the computer, I guess, because there was no switch power. So, I got to go through the firewall again 
So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap a fuse in the fuse box. And this car has no interior fuse box, unfortunately. So I found a switched fuse right there. And what I'm going to do is this red wire, this guy right here, is actually I've got my little fisher, my little fishing thing. I got my fisher going through the firewall right down there. You can see it below the red wire. So I'm going to, I'm going to, it's now inside the car. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it from this end right here. And I'm going to uh, take the heck out of this wire to that guy right there and slowly pull it back through. And hopefully it will go through. We'll see. All right, I've been trying to get a handle on the wiring. I got the uh, nine wire and all the RCAs coming down this side and going in. I got to clean that up as soon as I figure out how much access I have. I've taped this all down, kind of planning my route. And then on the other side, I've got uh, the power. So power coming down that side of the car and then coming around here and going into there because you don't want to have your power and your RCA cables um, you want to keep them separated as much as you possibly humanly can so it doesn't offer any interference. So we're kind of clean. I got my power wire from the, uh, from the fuse box that I still got to throw up there. And then the monster. It's actually pretty much all wired up, with the exception of that temporary one. Um, but yeah, got that to do. And um, the biggest, hardest part is fitting it all back in there. Yikes. All right, so I've made a little bit of progress. Uh, I said earlier I wasn't going to put it back in, but I put it back in because I needed to test everything and make sure that it worked. And uh, everything works, so I think I'm just going to kind of leave it there for now. I'm not going to bolt it down, but, uh, but it's in. Okay, so as far as the wiring of the speakers is concerned, um, all the front speakers, the grays and the whites, are done. And the red and the black is the sub. I called an audible on the rear speakers because this car never had rear speakers before. Instead of using the purples and the greens from the speed wire, I just wired directly to the amp. So this is all waiting to be hooked up, but I got to get the carpet in here and figure out if it's going to work or if it's going to be a epic fail. Carpet's going down. All right, so with the help of a couple of assistants, it's in. And now I must commence the cutting. So I know that this is an edge right here, so I'm gonna start there and uh, try not to cut any of the wires below. Yay. So here we are with the carpet back in and it's a little rough around the amp, but really, there's a chair going to go over this anyway, so nobody will ever see it. And I still have some good access uh, if I ever need it. And of course, you definitely want access to this side right here to uh, dial it in. And that will still be accessible even when the chair gets put back in. Now i got to figure out how to mount the sub and the back speaker so they don't jump all around. Okay, I can see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to go ahead and install these speakers in the speaker boxes. And then it's just a matter of getting back in the truck and figuring out how to secure everything. These have ends to go to the speaker, but they left these like this so that you could do with them what you want to do with them. And I'm just going to solder them to the back here. So as soon as the iron heats up, I'm going to make those connections and uh, then we just matter of screwing it in. All right, we've got these taken care of. They look rather handsome, if I do say so myself. On to the next. Okay, so the maximum width at the bottom is the width of the subwoofer, which is eight inches. And there's uh, a little over four feet in the car. And this is a four feet piece. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and measure eight inches and rip it. Okay, I have carpeted a piece of wood for the uh, sub and the other speakers to sit on and I'm thinking I'll velcro the stuff on the top and then on the bottom I think I'll use magnets so that this thing stays put and then that way when I need to pull it up if I need to pull it up I can just pull it right up I pulled 
the carpet back and I'm just going with magnets and hitting the metal. So uh, I'm gonna add a few more magnets. All right, so there is the shelf with the magnets. It worked good. Okay, it's reality check time. I have got everything for the very first time ever all plugged in and I wanna run a test to make sure that everything's working because I'm not looking forward to putting that seat back in and uh, I'm gonna yank all this stuff out before I put the seat back in. All right, so everything works. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the car back together, starting with that. I've been stalling for at least a half hour listening to music, but it's time to put my big boy pants on and get the seat back in, which has really been scaring me because of how close it's gonna to come to this amp. And this is why I was so concerned. I've got a millimeter, maybe, but it's in. I gotta bolt the seat down, but that should be the last, should be the last scary part. And just because I've had these things in and out so many times, I'm gonna hit it with some blue Loctite. All right, so there is the shelf with the magnets. It worked good. It's not going anywhere at all. That's locked down there good. Now I'm gonna Velcro and get these uh, speakers in there and go for a drive. All right, so there it is. Everything is put back in the car. And there's the stereo and how it looks in its spot. And then back here, this is how all this ended up. All in all pretty clean. And I guess the obvious question is, how does it sound? And uh, I always get a kick out of people who build 50,000 watt uh, car stereo systems and then uh, record the audio with their cell phone and say this is how it sounds. Obviously we can't capture how great it sounds because it does sound amazing. But in an effort to try to capture the sound, I'm gonna switch to my, my Sony my Tascam and my Rode, and that's how I'm going to record the audio. Now I've got to switch cameras. Alright, with this one I'm going to try to push the bass a little. Alright, so at this point I haven't listened to the audio yet, so I hope the uh, audio was able to at least somewhat capture how amazing it sounds, because it does truly sound amazing. I highly recommend upgrading your stereo system. Uh, it's fun to do, and the sound is just amazing. Um, I'll have links to everything that you've seen in this video down below, uh, links to Amazon, so that you could get uh, the same or similar items. Uh, also, um, if you like what you saw, please comment, like, and especially subscribe uh, if you want notifications for future videos, and I've got dozens and dozens of new videos coming out. Also, hit the little bell. That will give you a notification when I uh, release a new video. So, this is it. I'm Steve. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.